And I think that kind of digs down into even deeper roots of just like maybe not loving and accepting yourself, you know? As RuPaul would say, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen up in here? Hey there, it's Kristen, and today we are talking about Netflix's You Season 3. In this new season, Joe and Love are married and raising their newborn son, Henry, in the California suburb of Madre Linda. The relationship dynamic takes a new turn as Joe continues to repeat the cycle of obsessions that he has had in the past, while Love is flipping the script to make sure that she has her perfect family and will not let it be torn away so easily by Joe's actions. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and drop down in the comments and let me know your thoughts on this season of you. Just want to give you a heads up, there will be spoilers in this video, so you've been warned. You is a show that is just so much fun to dive into and explore. The first season really set up Joe's serial killer behaviors, and we got to see what happens when you are the focus of his obsession, like Beck. The second season, I think, really played up more the ideas of Joe being sort of like an anti-hero in a way. Now in this new season, Joe feels trapped while Love feels lost, and the two of them are really a balancing act trying to deal with married life and their murderous impulses. And of course, just days before this third season has come out, it's already been confirmed that you is getting a fourth season on Netflix. So don't worry, there's still so much more story to tell here. But let's get into this third season. One of the things that I really loved following was that dynamic between Love and Joe. They sort of see themselves on different playing fields, even though they're really kind of the same. Getting a chance to see them going to therapy and seeing their dual answers was really interesting and um, seeing them trying to play on the same field. We're a team, okay? And I loved hearing a little bit more about how each of them is feeling. Joe sees himself as this noble white knight and he thinks love is kind of crazy. Whereas love sees herself as this person who is trying to keep her family together. She'll do anything for that unconditional love. And she thinks Joe's impulses are gonna ruin that. They both have these same worries that like, if someone sees the real them, they might go away, they might not love them. And they wanna both protect to fight that family and that unconditional love, and yet they still keep kind of turning on each other. You know, it's like they, they want that, but then when they have it, they don't accept it. One of the moments in the season that I thought was really key, pun intended, was when they bring back that glass box and both of them decide to hide keys in there because they don't trust the other person. I thought that was just a really telling moment throughout the season. Season. And you know, it's so interesting because Joe and Love are kind of like a mirror looking at each other. And I think even though they both want that love and acceptance and that unconditional love and that family, they kind of want this pure, perfect, unattainable version of it that is not really possible to have. Joe, if he knew about love beforehand and her true colors had come out, he wouldn't want to be with her, even though she's exactly like him. And I think that kind of digs down into even deeper roots of just like, maybe not loving and accepting yourself, you know? As RuPaul would say, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen up in here? I was really hoping, especially in that first half of this season, that we we're just gonna see Love and Joe be this murderous power couple, and I was really here for it. I also really liked how we got to focus on each of them individually, like I really feel like Joe and Love are equals in this story. Joe, we really learn more about the mother issues that he has and how he's trying to escape and get out of this situation and is really only here for baby Henry. He's trying to suppress some of his impulses and is really, you know, in this case, covering up a lot for Love and ends up using his obsessions as a way that he thinks he's going to get out of this situation by either falling for Natalie or falling for Marion. Like, is this a way that he can escape and find that real happiness. And honestly, I don't know if that's possible. And with Love, she's really still struggling with the death of her brother. And we see a great scene where we see sort of like a ghostly figure of him. And, you know, it kind of comes out that Joe is not her you. 40 was. That was her person. They were twins. They, you know, she was born with that other half. And she might never actually have that again, and that that's okay. I also thought the show did a really great job of tackling some very relevant topics. They're talking about everything from the missing white woman phenomenon, which we like literally have watched happen in the news lately. Um, they talked about uh, you know cheating scandals for colleges. They talked about vaccination fears. They really dove into a lot of hot topics this season, while also playing up that balance between the suburbs and like 
murder, which I just found so entertaining. And I think the performances in this season were just really strong overall. I mean, Victoria Pedretti, just an incredible talent. Penn Badgley, you know, really sells us on his character. Um, and like I said, I was really hoping the two of them were going to just join forces, finally accept each other and be this murderous power couple. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. And I will say when they started moving away from that storyline and, you know, had them kind of stop worrying about their marriage and start going after different people, that's kind of when it started losing me a little bit just because I didn't care about Theo. You no, know, I did like Marion, but, you know, I really was hoping for just like, you know, a new evil power couple, like, I don't know, the next Chucky and Tiffany, you know, where they just end up having fun together and kind of take on a different tone with this story. And it just felt very hypocritical of love to be having this secret relationship with Theo, but then still being extremely jealous around Joe. And like when they try to have that whole like open relationship swingers moment, she like freaks out. And it's like, but you've also been cheating on your husband. So, you know, uh, just another example of Joe and love just being very hypocritical, feeling like they're the one that's right and the other one's wrong and they can defend what they do, but they don't want to defend what the other person has done. I was mad about the story with Love and Theo, but also I think it does make sense that she's looking for someone to save and this is a kid that needs help. So, you know, that's Love's whole MO is that like she wants to save someone. I mean, that's Joe and Love's MO is that they're always trying to be that white knight. I guess there can only be one hero in the story. So they each saw themselves as a hero and the other as a villain and one of them had to go. The way that the kills happen, you know, Love is doing these things that she feels are necessary to save her family. And Joe is also doing things that he feels are necessary to save people like killing Marion's ex. And yet, again, they both are doing things, the same things, and yet blaming each other. When really, the problem is both of them. The problem is both of them. We do also get some big reveals in this season. Um, we do find out what happened with Love's former husband that passed away. Um, it turned out he had been sick. He got better and then he wanted to divorce her and she wanted to talk it out. So she poisoned him with asinite in hopes that it would just kind of slow him down. The plan wasn't to kill him. It was more to like make it so he can't move so they can talk it out, which seems like a lunatic idea. She ends up giving him too much and that's what killed him. So um, yes, love did in fact kill her former husband. Uh, and then she ends up doing the same thing to Joe in hopes of talking out things with him and you know stopping him from running off with Marion and, and the baby and doing basically whatever she can to keep her family together. And um, Joe, though, is a couple of steps ahead and ends up killing Love, setting up a whole plan so it looks like he's dead too, and we end the season with him in Paris. I was surprised that he did end up killing her just because, you know, originally he didn't kill her because she was pregnant and, you know, now she's the mother of his son and, you know, now that kid doesn't have a mom anymore, but, you know, he's got two great dads to raise him. It looks like he may be searching for Marion and her daughter um, because that to him was the ultimate relationship. And I will say there was some interesting dynamic there where it seemed like Marion maybe even kind of was okay with some of the things that Joe did because they did help her in the long run. Um, so who knows, maybe they, maybe they would be a good match, but um, you know, I just feel like this is the typical situation for Joe is that he sets his eye on someone, you know, wants them to be perfect, everything about them to be perfect. When he found out love wasn't, that caused problems. So far, nobody has been perfect, but he thinks Marion is. So will he end up finding her in season four? I'm also curious now, like, you know, what's gonna happen with baby Henry? Joe has now given him to Dante and his boyfriend. I was really excited to see them kind of bring forth that story of like two gay men raising a baby. I think that's something that's really important. That's something that's in my family. I think that that was really beautiful to see. Will Henry ever know about his real father? Um, will they ever come across each other? Or is it like, all right, well, Joe is supposed dead so like that's it now we've like left this story and I don't know why but I also have this theory that in season four we may also see some recurring characters from the past like Ellie like Paco I don't know why I just feel like that would be a really great place to kind of bring those characters back even if it was for like an episode or an arc or something but you know now at this point Joe is 
dead, so to speak. He's going to have to be somebody else. Uh, we've already seen him, you know, take on a different identity in the past. I just feel like going into season four, like if he does come across Marion again, like she's not going to last, right? Like something's going to happen. Uh, there's always something with Joe. That's why I was hoping that, you know, maybe love would be that kind of like final girl, so to speak, where the two of them would just be like this dangerous power couple together. Um, and then you could like end on them just kind of like taking over a whole town and, you know, running things. So there are still a lot of questions at the end of the season. And I think overall, um, this was a really solid season. I definitely enjoyed it more than season two. Victoria Pedretti and Penn Badgley are just really great actors. So the two of them playing opposite each other is just like really strong. The first half of the season was epic. I really was like, I'm on this team. I was really, really rooting for Love and Joe. They kind of lost me a little bit towards like the, the middle half where, you know, they each kind of started veering off and doing their own little you know, trying to save somebody, falling in love with them, you know, cheating relationship thing. I didn't love that. And then they ended like in a really strong kind of crazy place. I was not expecting the end, but I guess, you know, when it comes down to it, it was really love versus Joe this whole season. Neither one of you is going to kill your spouse. You're many things, but you are not murderers. Who's going to make it out of this relationship alive? Joe didn't want that love. So I'm curious to see where we're going to go in season four. And like, will Joe ever get a happy ending? How is this story going to end? I can't see an ending any other way than just like more blood and obsession and murder. So we'll see what happens next. If you guys like this one, you can check out more of my you reviews right over here and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.